you have brand loyalty when it comes to coffee? Yeah, uh, I like the one that's called Le, Le Cambre or something. Do you Le know Combe? what that is? Le, no. Le Colombe. Le Colombe. Oh, La Colombe. I think they sell that at the, the coffee shop near my, uh, in, in our building. Yeah. La Colombe. Uh, it's good. They have a whole bunch of different flavors. Hashtag ad. Hashtag, <laughs> Hashtag uh, live read for uh, La Colombe. <laughs> First step, mispronounce the name. <laughs> not really remember what it is, but. And, you know, just any flavor, not anyone specific to like have people nail you down to a, to a flavor. Just, just whatever, whatever they got. Well, there's this one I like called Lioness. Oh, that's very progressive. And they donate a portion to like women's rights. There you go, lioness. I feel, like I'm, I feel like that's enough that I'm doing right. <laughs> yeah, you, you, what do you, you buying like one cup of coffee? No, no, this is a whole, time? This is like a, a, a pouch of coffee. Oh, okay. So with each pouch of beans, ground, grounded, ground beans, yeah, they give money, which yeah. is, which is, I, I'm always surprised by those companies where, I guess Tom's was, is a very popular one in New York with. Mm -hmm. Like if you buy one of their shoes, like w another one of those shoes gets like given, donated or whatever. To but then um, why don't they just give shoes to people? Well, that's m what I'm thinking. Because you just break even. Break even, but also like you see the shoes, at least the Tom shoes, they're pretty basic. It's basically like canvas with some stitching. Like they're 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 not like wood or leather or anything like that. It's they're straightforward, right? And yeah, I guess it's a business model, but I don't know what the margins look like. Like, how much are they actually making on the one that you and I are buying versus mm -hmm. the one they're you know donating? Well, it is honestly the best flavor that they have, but it's one among like right. 20 something different ones so it's it's not that big of a and it's a portion that they're donating yeah. you're buying it for the flavor not for it, <laughs> uh giving money to uh women's rights well that's a plus that's a plus well wouldn't you like buy everything that does something like that <laughs> well i don't need everything that does something <laughs> <laughs> you don't need no, you know, for every need... for every uh, swimsuit you buy, uh, Mark, another swimsuit is donated. Yeah, a specific fragrance of perfume. Yeah. How do you uh, how do you take your coffee? I take it with half and half and sugar. Oh, I was setting like you up free... for a joke there. Yeah, I didn't go for it because it's <laughs> it's a basic joke. It's a basic joke. It's a good one though. Half and half. <laughs> And one sugar, one packet. Uh, three, three, three uh, scoops. Three I, scoops. I yeah, I have all my sugar in a Tupperware, but I don't have one of those like diner things. I should oh, get like one a of shaker those. or something. Like yeah, that. so it's all just loose in a <laughs> Tupperware thing, <laughs> and I scoop. I scoop it with the spoon. I mean, that still works. That's fine. It's it's not as like design designy. You know, if you were some uh, stranger was in your house and was just like, oh, here's so here's a coffee, Lioness, my favorite flavor. And then I want to put <laughs> sugar in it. They'd be like, where's this sugar shaker? Yeah. And you'd be like, I hate it from you. It's in Tupperware. You never thought about that. Right. I don't. I, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I don't, I don't put sugar in it pretty much anything anymore. Like tea, I'll drink tea. I don't put any sugar in it. How do you take your tea? Uh, like I take my tea, you know, strong and um, hot. Strong and hot. It's not the same with tea because... The joke? Yeah, the joke doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess it could work. Neither of us you know, did I, the joke. <laughs> I take it brown and with a lot of bits inside of it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. A lot of herbs. It does. It's not quite the same. Yeah. Um, no, but like uh, I'll put honey <laughs> sometimes instead of. Uh, I could say that joke. Oh, I like mine brown with a little bit of honey in it. 
Right. But I don't know what that means. It, it, it doesn't, the innuendo doesn't really work. Leave it up to the listener. That's true. Let them decide. Yeah. Um, that's, no, that's the lazy form of writing. Yeah, just let uh, the audience well, leave, leave the ending <laughs> ambiguous, and then you know, Inception did the did the top fall or did it stay up? Let them decide because I don't know. <laughs> because we've spent know. so much time and money on the rest of this movie, you think I'm gonna finish it? <laughs> well, that is, uh, it's become a convention of modern whatever culture of just like it's up to you to figure it out, mm-hmm. and there's there's something I guess the word is probably empowering to be like, well, I am interpreting this the way I want to, but it's not the way that usually the creator is creating it. Yeah. It's, and I think that is also uh, something people say if it was like generally disliked, they'll be like, well, everybody has their own interpretation and you know, no interpretation is wrong. Right. Or it's just like, no, there is a, interpretation nobody liked your interpretation of it which is why we dislike it Mm -hmm. like that was the big thing with uh then you know sopranos people are just like i hate it just yeah it it just ended and then i think over time people are realizing it's like oh it's a poignant ending and it kind of like stops short of the thing you've been you know kind of wanting this whole time which is some sort of violent end and it's just like Mm. i don't think so it's the greatest twist of all time it's also tough to end any show after what nine years ten years or something how long was that show on um i think it was six seven but it was extended so it was like six seasons but like something like that something like lost where you you build up this whole thing like it's impossible to live up to the expectations of every fan to end it it in a way that they want it and I was wondering too, like, I was thinking about that for their shows like that where they introduce a character and it doesn't really go anywhere. And I'm wondering if it's, are they creating it and being like, we'll figure this out at some point. But like right now, this character, or this storyline serves this purpose. I think on Lost, they said they definitely made it up as they went along. Yeah. I think that's at least towards the beginning, they didn't plan for like, oh, what are we going to do with these polar bears? Like that right. was something specific that they're like, yeah, throw that in and we'll like figure yeah, it fuck out it. later. <laughs> Just toss it in there, man. So I think JJ Abrams said like they a couple times they wrote themselves into a corner. Right. Like, well, how do we? How do we get out? Explain this. Well, it was it and was all a dream. <laughs> it was all a dream. Yeah, I feel like imagine being the first show that did that. Like the first form of entertainment that was like it was a dream. that whole thing was a dream. It, there, there was a TV show that did it. It was in the was it in the eighties? I want to say. I don't know why I'm saying Dallas. It might have been Dallas. I'm not. You can look it up. But I doubt that would be the first one that did it. Probably the most famous one. He like gets out of the shower or something. He's supposed to be dead and gets out of the yep. shower. It's Dallas. Dallas. Okay. Um. And I guess like Newhart did it too, which I guess it was a yeah, spoof yeah. of Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I I think for a show like like a Lost, where it, Lost was a great show, I really love Lost. Um, it was really well done, and then it kind of lost its way as they realized that the show had to come to an end probably earlier than they were anticipating and had to start wrapping wrapping stuff up Mm -hmm. and they were just like this is not gonna happen in an elegant way and (laughs) and it was just kind of like all right yeah so they were all in purgatory i guess and i mean whatever it's done now and then people are just and then people universally hate the show now because of the ending which is unfortunate. I think at the time, definitely. I feel like as we've moved on, people see it as like, oh, I guess it wasn't that bad. That's how I look at it. Like, I didn't right. hate it. I was just like, yeah, whatever. That's how they ended the show. Yeah, that's <laughs> I true. I have no opinion on it. <laughs> but, uh, but now I'm like, yeah, it's, it's fine. I don't know. Also, it's something what that's... What else could you, you have done? Like, have you ever read a book that was like that? Where you, no, At never. the end of the book, you were like... <laughs> 
<laughs> You've never read a book. No. But uh, it's weird how like <laughs> you obviously invest a lot of time watching a TV show. So yeah. the ending comes and you're just like, and you don't like it. It kind of invalidates that whole experience you went through, right? Well, nobody really wants the ending to come, right? They just want a show that's going to be on forever. And you think consistent. that's where it is? Like that's where that internally that's where the uh, people are upset like game of thrones was like it's ending so people are are just getting themselves ready to be upset about it ending and it not being sure good, regardless of if it was good or not i mean they just gave up in that let, like there was the starbucks cup that was on oh, bro. uh i never i've never watched the show i think i, wa- I watched the first season and yeah. then just too many characters too know? many characters I I watched the show and after the first season I I read the first book. So I kind of did it that. So I like watched the season as it happened and then read the book afterwards. Cuz I think it's one of the few shows um that has been created where the source material is as dense as it is yeah. and the creator is still alive and involved in the creation of the TV show. Mm-hmm. and i guess he wrote it with the idea that it was going to be kind of unfilmable and it is like as a book it's very intricate and there are a lot of characters and they're all told in a very specific way um which is why i was fa- like fascinated with like the first season where the main character dies and then it's just like what that's never happened on tv or mm-hmm. something and he was like on that. all the billboards and stuff yeah. like that so you're like oh the whole thing's about him and that's kind of great because i remember watching it having no idea about the the books and was just like dang they killed the main character now now what and you're just like immediately like i want to watch the next we have 52 other characters to follow (laughs) so so get ready and a lot of them are gonna die as well and by that time you're just gonna be like oh i get it you're just killing everybody yeah but it is kind of interesting my conspiracy theory of George R. R. Martin and creating the TV show Game of Thrones is he's famously still writing those books. Like he has not ended the books yet, the trilogy mm-hmm. or more than a trilogy, the series. My conspiracy theory is that he get, he had two endings. He had the ending that he gave to the TV show and he had an ending that he was ultimately going to write. But he wasn't sure what he was going to do. So what he did was he's just like, all right, I haven't written the book that would end the series yet, but I'm going to give you kind of a roadmap of where I'm going to go. So you write your TV show. They write the TV show. It's universally kind of panned as like, oh, this is not great. And as a writer, he's just like, okay, well, I won't do that then. I'll do this thing. And And then then, it'll sell the book because people will hear that it's a different ending. People, people will be like, well, I dislike the TV show. Now I'm going to read the book and figure out what he, his ending, his true ending, quote unquote, would be. And meanwhile, he's laughing to the motherfucking bank. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's already online. rich. He's online at the bank with his little sailor's hat. Yeah. Whatever he wears. And, you know, the teller's there and they're like, hello, Mr. Martin. And he's just like, hello, just cash in another book ch- you know, check from my book, the one that uh, I basically, uh, what was it? Um, what is it? What do they do when uh, they get a bunch of people at a table and they judge whether, like, is this good? Um, like focus, focus test. Focus test. Yeah. He focus tested his book with a TV show, made millions, and there's just like, all right, now I'll just write whatever. Also, he may never finish it. Which would be even better. Or finish right. it like it's done, not release it. And then like, let's say he dies. And then 10 years after he dies, he releases it or, or whatever. He's a, man, he's a maniac. Yeah. Seems like a sweet guy. Yeah, lovely person. Anytime I've seen him on television, he seems like a nice guy. Yeah, he's like... Um, he. I think the first time I saw him, I I was just like, "This is what uh, Tolkien looks like." 
Wait, when did he start writing the book? Like, has he always just been an old man? Because, <laughs> like, he, there's a lot of subject 80s. matter in it where it's like, oh, it seems like a like a child. <laughs> <It'd be> like, <laughs> and then there's all these boobs and yeah, it will. I don't know if that's a trope of like the fantasy violence. genre. Yeah, but nudity. I don't. No, like you know those um, Motorhead or Iron Maiden covers or posters like that yeah. artwork that looks like a 13 year old teenager drew that stuff where it's just like right robots with like red you know bursting eyes and then women who have boobs that are three times bigger than their torso and yeah. <laughs> you know just like an upside down pyramid and they're so disproportionately shaped but that's what a mind of a teenager would think they're just like oh yeah boobs yeah and they, they start with the boobs and then the body follows and they're <laughs> yeah, like oh boy <laughs> when they're drawing the boot the boobs first they're just like all right and then they're just like oh there's not enough paper here yeah uh, the boobs are too big <laughs> and then the small head and then you know the torso somewhat has to encapsulate these things and then <laughs> you know put a couple of stick legs and you're good but it does hit the book definitely does feel like yeah like a like a like a horny teen wrote it in some yeah. respect and others respect it's like good character development decent plot story and all that stuff uh, but there are definitely moments where you're just like Ugh. this is definitely some kid's <laughs> journal that he got published <laughs> yeah this guy's weird we can tell a lot about this guy by reading his work well, that was the thing with um, Fifty Shades of Grey and then Twilight. Yeah. Like, Twilight was that. Literally, it was uh, somebody on Reddit. I've, I don't know who the, the writer was for Twilight, but they wrote, like, fanfic for Fifty Shades of Grey with werewolves. And it was, it, and it was an adult, but it felt like, all right, this is horny teens. Mm-hmm being like well we can't just have like people romantically inclined they have to be werewolves yeah love's not interesting without danger <laughs> <laughs> yeah and and it, what if instead of werewolves it was like frankensteins like what if you just missed the boat <laughs> of what i guess werewolves i don't know from my well, you know it's about vampires, right? I there I know there's werewolves in it, oh, but isn't it mostly okay, about vampires? Yeah, you're right. I thought it was werewolves. I never read the book. I, I only guess you're saw... Team Jacob all the way. Is he a werewolf? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he might be the vampire. I think Okay, he's yes. Wolf. Vampires. All right. I was for my in my mind I was just like, werewolves aren't that sexy. Why are we making werewolves fuck? Well, they're sexy and then they when they turn into a werewolf. That's that they're like smoldering and then Right. Ooh, no, it serious. makes sense that they're vampires. Uh, because vampires well they suck your blood, which is obviously, you know sensual. Sensual. But yeah, like I think we're headed towards a direction where that is more of a thing for sure. I do I do want to see a movie of sexy Frankensteins and sexy mummies. <laughs> sexy swamp <laughs> thing. Teen yeah, teenager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh it's it's just like like crusty bandages wrapped around your face mm -hmm. and it's just like oh he's he, his family just moved here and it, <laughs> they said he's he's been alive for over 3000 years and whenever the teacher calls up on him you're just like oh. <laughs> he's just like wow his voice is so deep and then, you know, he falls in love and his dad, like her dad is basically, he's like, what are you, what are you doing later? It was like, oh, me and Candace, we're going to go hang out with the mummy boy. And he gets he's upset. A, he's an archaeologist. He's he an archaeologist. He wants to study. He wants to stop. Well, he wants, to, he wants to stop his daughter from dating the mummy, but also because he knows the dangers of mummies from being an archaeologist. Yeah. Because only just, they know. Only they, well, only they like, only truly understand the mysterious power of the mummy. And she's just like, well, we're just going to hang out. And he's just like, I forbid you to hang out with this. My daughter thing. is not hanging out with a mummy. <laughs> and then everybody's like, whoa. 
That is my favorite trope of any movie, TV show, whatever. It is the pissed off dad who is yeah. refusing uh usually it's his daughter dating somebody he's just like right you will not date him you understand me if you live under this house if you live <laughs> under this roof yeah <laughs> you will follow my rules and and it's, the kids are 100 percent always going to then sneak out at night through the window yeah hop in some like shitty car that's just kind of like idling in the street you know and there's the mummy with the bandages just waiting there and he's just like oh and she's <laughs> like oh you're so funny <laughs> i love that so much you can't play baseball <laughs> you're a child you're a child I mean, you got to have one of those in every. Somebody tells the main character that they can't. They can't. Well, do you think um, George R. R. Martin's parents were just like, "What the fuck is this? I was reading your book. <laughs> what? Uh, no son of mine is going <laughs> to write a book about <laughs> dragons." <laughs> and George R. R. Martin's just like, "I'll show you. I'll show you." And he's just like doodling like dragons and, and this is a map and, we... <laughs> <laughs> and this is a map and they use these stones and the stones will kill the dragons. <laughs> and and meanwhile his father is just like holding whatever hair he has left while he's losing his house and he's figuring out what he's gonna do financially and his son is <laughs> is underneath uh, his bed sheets with a flashlight in his mouth, drawing dragons and drawing maps and figuring out the economic system of Westeros. Yeah, and it's just like his father's just like, "Where did I go wrong?" Everybody was a teen at some point. Yeah, got to think about that. And with every upset father, there is the the mother slash wife who's just kind of like, "Let him, let him draw the dragons." <laughs> Just let him draw the dragons. He's expressing his creativity. And then they scream at each other. And she's just like, why am I even with you anymore? Yeah. You used to be so much fun. And then he's just like, oh, did I change? Did I become the person I never wanted to become? Mm -hmm. And then at the end, he's just like, George, I bought your book and I read it and I loved it. And George is like, some money. <laughs> can I borrow some money? Because you're rich now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Should we get started? Let's get started. <laughs>